Hi people, uh, this is another video about uh, you know Unreal Engine uh, Preview 1 and today I'd like just to add a few things that I discovered in the meanwhile a lot of talking to people and you know checking forums etc so um, the, the, it's not something I discovered myself it's, it's uh, knowledge that is out there um, but nevertheless I want to just go through because it's kind of a additional to what I was speaking in the in the previous video about the things I've discovered and um, I just and basically I just want to clarify a few things that I, that I clarified myself in the meanwhile because a few things I said last time might not be entirely correct I don't remember exactly but let's go through it um, so last time we saw that um, there is a, 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 a very comprehensive list of nodes now here and some of these nodes they do come in the form of function and if you remember I said um, because now this 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 um, option is available and they allow us to generate to create these nodes uh, that, that um, are shipped with Unreal Engine I said probably this function is exposed and indeed it is not only that but um, last time I actually never thought about the fact that because this is a function it behaves exactly like any other function which means you can totally double click on it and this is something that uh, it's not only powerful in the graph but it's one of the best tool for to learn how to do things in, in the most epic way ha no pun intended uh, so for example if you really are interested in how they are implementing switch fk to ik simply double click on it and last time I was you know just blown away by the new things and I, I never thought about it but it totally makes sense so for example if you uh, um, you know compute pull vector is something I implemented myself but now this function come comes uh, there are a few videos for that but this function comes uh, you know it ships with the engine and you can see that inside how they're doing it basically it's definitely a better implementation of what I've done uh, th there is a debug mode to draw also a transform uh, but you can see that the math in there is roughly what I was talking about um, last time it's a known function that it takes two vectors um, you know the, the, the start and the end of the IK chain is subtract them to find you know the longest uh, side and then and, and then it does a dot product which and it normalizes it because and, and this basically it's a projection where they found where they find you know the middle point the, the projected point of the second uh, of the first vector to to the, the the one we just found with the subtraction uh, and then they 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 normalize it they scale it and then they add they add uh, uh, an offset probably somewhere just to position it which it's probably the offset let me see yeah is oh they're using yeah probably I was doing this I don't remember but basically they're scaling by a factor so that's the opposite factor that puts the, the the pull vector in position if this doesn't make any sense to you uh, it's just because I'm not repeating what what there are different other videos that explain that but um, yeah so anyway this is a really cool thing so if you notice here these functions here they do come from a standard function library um, library and the node itself is standard function library so what happens let me close this that was a spoiler what happens if I double click on it you can see that it's pointing to this standard function library so now I have opened something that ships with the engine but where is it if you if you browse to it basically is inside the control rig plugin folder and if you're not able to see it it's because it could be that you have the show plugin content off so if you turn show plugin content you should be able to browse to it and see where it where is it browse again over here you can see that this is the standard function library now one thing to do that i realized a little bit you know after after I played a little bit is just is the following if I go into uh, where did I saved 
by the way this is just a sandbox project and I'm not usually this messy if I go in here this is this is the control rig I created in the last video um, it's not created it's just a bunch of nodes by the way it's just this this graph here which with me just throwing random node in and getting excited about it so um, so here's the thing this I, I want you to see uh, this node type is of type control rig the asset type it's of control rig you can see that in parentheses first thing to to remember keep this in mind this node is control rig second thing to remember blueprint if I create a blueprint a very simple blueprint uh, class of type actor you can see that the blueprint asset type is blueprint class okay but if I want to create in the start in the you know traditional legacy I would say way of doing things you know when you when you program new mm, blueprint behaviors you you probably end up having a lot of functionality that you want to share among blueprint actors or blueprint classes to do that you do you would do a blueprint function library okay so if I hover over this if I hover over this, this is again an, a blueprint class, but it's it's inheriting from a function library. Okay, so this behaviors, this behavior, it's pretty much, you know, allows you to create a function here, and then this function you can call this function from any blueprint that you create. Uh, let me. I don't know why I keep doing this. Uh, docking layout. Thank you very much. Um, so wh why what I'm trying to say here the the control type of the mannequin it's it's sorry the control rig asset type is of type control rig but if I browse to this one you can see that the standard function limonene it's also of control rig what this means is that in order for you to create a, a library that is shareable and you know packed with function that you can call in any control rig you just need to create an asset type of control rig okay so the way you can do that is by simply create an empty control rig so we create control rig type control rig and then you can rename it my new function library so this, when, it, when you open this, you can see that it's an empty blueprint. It has no hierarchy, nothing. But then you can start populate functions here. And this function somehow, and we're going to see how, will be available in my normal blueprint. So they should be available here as a list. How do we do that? Well, I have created in my... This is the function I've just created. This is the uh, the control rig function library I've just created, which is empty. But I have created this one, my fun function, my function library. If you double click on it, you can see that I have created a very simple function that is return 10. It's the most amazing function you will ever see. This is super complicated. It takes no inputs. It takes 10, add zero and returns it. As a as a as an output called this is ten. Oh, by the way, quick add addendum, something really cool. Um, you know when you when you create variables, of course the variables you can pick up the type, right? Another change I've noticed is that they changed um, the float. Float now it's called real. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, but in math of a real, it's basically the 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 set that is the um, combined um, rational and irrational, uh, irrational numbers uh, so basically these are the floats these are what you, we were used to floats it's like uh, rational numbers or, or fractions basically so if you see that there is no float option anymore that's what real are I think it was this was a really neat change um, where, where was I um, yeah so I have this function here and you can see that this function that I have selected again in my function library, if I go into the mannequin and, and, and type, start typing 
return 10, you can see that this function is available. And this function also happens to be a specific color. This is a really cool thing because this color, you can specify it here. So this is my main rig. Remember, in all the previous videos, all this function, we're here, we're living here inside the solvers. But now I can create a very um, nice and neat and clean function library and I can, I, that I only have to maintain once and I don't have to copy functions around if they're doing the same thing among different rigs. So now I can, you know, just have my rig and call all, all my functions. So why is this function visible here? The function is visible here because this function in the function library has been specified as public. And if I were to turn this to private, get rid of that, and if I were to, to type this now, I think that if I type return 10, you see it's not available anymore? Because this function now, it's private to this control rig. So this is what we would say private function. So it's local to the class you're currently working on. This is just a programming concept. But if you make it public, this function can be used among a, a different class. In this case, the SK mannequin control rig. Does that make sense? I hope. Um, so the 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 other cool thing is that you can, uh, you know, as many other type of assets in Unreal, like materials or textures, you can create a category, which means, you know, this is like you can say, this is my personal stuff or my library or whatever. I call it personal simply to distinguish from. The, the string library that is this node um, and then you can you can add keywords for example return 10 or let's see if I type return things see what happens so I'm trying to to use different words just to see what these things do like the personal is the category return 10 is the name of the function but I'm also adding keywords so if I compile this and save now, what happens if I type personal, you can see that the category contains return 10. If I type 10, it, it gives me 10. If I type return, it gives me that. And if I type things, it gives me that. So this is extremely convenient because it means that I can have a bunch of functions here and I can give keywords that, that doesn't necessarily have to reflect the name and this is a nice way for us to create uh, um, a very nice way to for us to create like a, a filtering system exactly the way this thing works anyway I hope that you find this video interesting I'll, I'll keep keep digging but definitely definitely you know, just double click on, on the different function to ships with Unreal Engine and see how are they doing things. I, I bet there is a lot to learn. Thank you.